Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a, a good day. Really nice day here today in Maine. Uh, sunny, uh, a few clouds, um, nice little breeze, and it's not cold out. <laughs> so we're having a beautiful day here on, on Tuesday this week. Um, and uh, it's uh, nice to see people outside walking their pets and you know riding their bikes and you know uh just being outside you know it's uh you could see you know how refreshing it is for people to be able to do that uh you know right now we're we've spent months here kind of indoors from the weather um but just you know see everybody out walking around looks looks it's nice so I wanted to start off uh, today with the story here that's kind of like, you know, I, an, an I told you so kind of thing <laughs> uh, concerning Donald Trump's is uh, Truth Social uh, Media Company there that he, that he created there, I guess. Um, now, if you recall, uh, he had to pay half a, almost half a billion dollars um, to the courts, remember? Uh, couple weeks back and everybody was like oh where's he gonna get the money where's he gonna get the money well then all of a sudden the sh the shares of his truth social uh, got really really inflated all of a sudden practically over the weekend I think it was like a, by Sunday there was the the value of truth social had went through the fucking roof okay <laughs> um, and people were buying stock at like ninety dollars a share in that company and it really was, you know, it was overinflated because there was only like four or five million people using Truth Social compared to the millions who who just use like Facebook or the millions that use uh, X or the millions that use, you know, these other uh, social media sites, okay? But nobody was really using Truth Social and so there was no real data to support the inflation, the inflated value of it at that time. Well, today, the stocks are plummeting at Truth Social. And what was being sold at $90 a share just a matter of two or three weeks ago, they're now selling at $25 a share and they're still falling. So let me read this article here from CNBC, okay? <laughs> uh, that was just published here, written by Dan Mangan. And here, let me see. Uh, the price of Trump media shares closed trading more than 14% lower Tuesday, hours after the company announced its Truth Social platform is moving to launch a live TV streaming platform. The sharp fall of DJT shares came uh, after they ended trading Monday on the NASDAQ down by more than 18%. DJT closed at $22.84 per share, 14.17% uh, lower than the opening price. 
The stock's price has dropped by a whopping 67.7% since Trump Media began trading as a public company on March 26, erasing more than $5 billion in market capitalization. Trump Media's majority shareholder is former President Trump, who holds nearly 60% of its stock. Trump was in court in New York on Tuesday for his criminal hush money trial where the first six jurors were picked. Earlier Tuesday, Trump Media in a press release said it, quote, has finished the research and development phase of its new live TV streaming platform and will begin scaling up its own content delivery uh, network, unquote. The company said it will roll out streaming content in three phases, the first of which will introduce Truth Social's content delivery network for streaming live TV to the app for Android, iOS, uh, and web. Phase two will release standalone Truth Social streaming apps for phones, tablets, and other devices, while phase three will release such apps for home television, Trump Media said. Quote, the streaming content is expected to focus on live TV, uh, including news networks, religious channels, family-friendly content, including films and documentaries and other content that has been canceled, uh, is at risk of cancellation, or is being suppressed on other places. In other words, garbage. <laughs> okay, if you weren't going to watch it before, you're not going to watch it anyway. Um... Trump Media, which had been privately held, merged on March 15th with so-called Special Purpose Acquisition Company, or SPAC, which was created to take such a firm uh, public. So, yeah, you see what's happening here? I mean, I don't even think Trump gives a shit that this thing is, is nosediving, okay? I think he got what he needed out of it, and uh, now it's fate, really. I mean, there's people out there that are still buying and thinking that it's going to turn around and they're going to make big returns. But fucking, they went from $90 a share down to like 22 I mean, Jesus. <laughs> you know, uh, that's not a very good sign for just what? Since March the 26th? That's pretty damn fast. I can't, I can't think of any other stock that's ever dropped like that practically overnight, you know, in, in, in that kind of a fashion that just went public only a few, couple weeks ago. So, um... You know, I was saying before, they, he was, they inflated the value of that stock so high that it was naturally going to crash, okay, uh, the way it's doing right now, back to where the value of it really ought to be, okay? It, that thing was never worth $90 a share, but stupid morons out there were buying it up at that so he could get more money so he could pay off his damn bond to the courts, you know, and now he suckered everybody into it. And once again... Whenever you do business with Donald Trump, you get burned. <laughs> okay, how many times do people have to learn that lesson about this guy? You know, especially the wealthy. You see, wealthy people, you can't be wealthy and make dumb decisions like that. You just can't. You, that's not the way it works. If you're going to be wealthy, you should be smart enough to stay wealthy. But no, you're, you go out there and you take these gambles. Why? Because, oh, you think Donald Trump's word is gold? When was the fucking last time he ever told the truth? Honestly, I mean, I think you people deserve it. I mean, to be so stupid as to fall into his goddamn trap. You think he's some guy that's going to rub a fucking lamp and good things are going to come, you know? <sighs> Jesus. So, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, I was saying back then, it, it, Trump's trying to, you know, rip people off again to pay off, to make them pay off his damn crimes, you know? And so that's what's happened here. And I knew it then, just as it doesn't really surprise me now, but I, you know, but the fact that it, it's happening and, you know, I don't think, you know, so much is being said about that because he's in court, falling asleep in the courtroom and stuff like that, you know, because he don't care, you know, why should he care? He, he probably knows there's no, nothing's going to come out of the verdict out of that, all right, so he's, he's just in there just to be in there, but he's, he's sleeping and, you know, Christ, you know, what, what you know, this is the guy, they, they're making uh, nicknames out of him, you know, uh, Sleepy Dawn or whatever the fuck they're calling him, you know, and everybody's making fun of him, but he, like I said, he doesn't care. Even negative attention is attention that he wants, okay? And when you, when you think like that, then you're really narcissistic and it's just, me, 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 always about fucking me all the time. That's that's what it is. He wants everybody's attention on him. 
you know, what he says, what he does. And half the time what he says doesn't even make any sense when you add it up, okay? Uh, and the things that he says, it's just like, you know, put a camera in front of him, he's mumbling, you know. Hurry up, grab, you know, get a, get some get some pictures of him, you know, he's, he's, he's doing something, you know. I mean, it, it's the media's uh, obsession with this guy that makes this whole thing sick because they just can't seem to get enough of him because they think, oh, he's going to make us money, you know. Well, maybe a little bit, but is it really worth, you know, covering every little damn thing he does? I mean, geez, the guy takes a shit and it's all front page news the next day. I mean... Why, why is that so important? The guy is a criminal, okay? He's a traitor to the country. He, he broke his, his oath of office when he was president. He got a lot of people killed. And now I'm not talking soldiers here. <laughs> I'm talking innocent people, you know, civilians, you and me. He got a lot of people killed while he was president, and he shows absolutely no remorse for it. In fact, he'd do it all over again if given the chance, okay? And until anybody holds him accountable for those things that he did, uh, nobody in America is really going to care about those four years that we all, you know, were locked in our homes and we couldn't go outside or we had to wipe our asses with uh, coffee filters and, you know what I'm saying? No one's going to care or even remember that. That's how, I mean, you talk about how quick that's already faded in people's minds now. Uh, it's, it's insane. But... Uh, that's that's what we have for a country and I just I feel like you know will somebody just put their foot down and stop the earth from turning here so we can get this country back on track you know uh, because we're really we're really sailing down the wrong river here uh, and we could be crashing into a bridge <laughs> you know we, we just don't know I mean it's just uh, all I could say is, you know, November can't get here quick enough. I, I don't want to say that because we just come out of winter. But I, like I'm saying, you know, I just, I wish this election could be over and done with already because I feel like America is just uh, itching to get that done. And the press really doesn't need to egg this on. I think people are really sick and tired of hearing about Trump in the news all the time and all the fucking crimes that he's committed and all the things he's got to answer for and, and probably won't live long enough to answer for all of it. Okay. He's, he's like I said, he's already falling apart now. I mean, they must keep him running on drugs or something like that because he's in the courtroom sleeping and when he's awake, he doesn't even make any sense when he talks. I mean, they, they make fun of, uh, of Biden. You know, but I think the the real the, the real person that we need to be focused on as far as health goes is Donald Trump. You know, he's obviously his health is obviously worse. You know, I feel than Biden's. You know, but I don't know. You know, people just don't want to see it. They don't want to admit that you know that Trump is is not presidential material. He wasn't the first time. He still ain't now. Okay, he's even less presidential now. Um, so, <laughs> um, anyway, that's, that's that. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you. Original.
a lot of really creepy statements, uh, actions for sure, but statements that he's made in the past that make me very uncomfortable, um, certainly as a mother, but as a person who breathes air. You going up the escalator? Yeah. I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Yeah. Really creepy, creepy statements. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it. Oh, it's so weird. Stop You know it. what? You are <laughs> sick. Yeah. 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 It makes me very uncomfortable that he would look at certain other Americans the way he apparently has in the past. What is Tiffany have of Marlon? She's got Marlon's legs. Creepy. We don't know whether or not she's got this part yet, but time will tell. <laughs> What's Creepy. the favorite thing you have in common with your father? Either real estate or golf. Donald with your daughter? Well, I was going to say sex, but I can't relate that. He's definitely not a typical father. Creepy. 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 Infrastructure. Nobody can do that like me. The infrastructure is very easy. An infrastructure will get that done easily. We are going to put up one of the big and great infrastructure bills of all time. So we call it Infrastructure Week. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Bravo. Charlottetown coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th and St. John November 20th through the 26th. thing here that uh, was uh, kind of odd in a way <laughs> uh, is this pro-Palestinian march that took place in uh, San Francisco and uh, you know in Chicago and other major cities like New York City and all that um, and I have this uh, from the AP uh, this article here uh, and it's entitled pro-Palestinian demonstrators shut down airport highways and key bridges in major US cities pro-Palestinian demonstrators blocked roadways in Illinois California New York and the Pacific Northwest on Monday temporarily shutting down travel into some of the nation's most heavily used airports uh, onto the Golden Gate Bridge and Brooklyn bridges and on a busy West Coast Highway. In Chicago, protesters linked arms and blocked lanes of Interstate 190 leading into O'Hare International Airport at about 7 in the morning in a demonstration they said was a part of a global, quote, economic blockade to free Palestine, uh, unquote, according to Rafka Falana, one of the organi organizers. I don't even know if I even pronounce that right. I'm sorry if I don't, because... I just don't have the tongue, I guess. <laughs> Traffic in the San Francisco Bay Area was snarled for hours as demonstrators shut down all vehicle, pedestrian, and bike traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge and chained themselves to 55-gallon drums filled with cement across Interstate 880 in Oakland. Protesters marching into Brooklyn uh, blockaded, uh, blocked Manhattan-bound traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge. In Eugene, Oregon, uh, protesters blocked Interstate 5, shutting down traffic on the major highway for about 45 minutes. 
protesters say they chose O'Hare in part because it is one of the largest airports. Among other things, they've called for an immediate ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. Anti-war protesters have demonstrated in Chicago uh, near daily since Hamas uh, October the 7th attack on southern Israel that killed around 1,200 people. Israeli warplanes and ground troops uh, have since conducted a scorched earth campaign on the Gaza Strip. The Israel offensive has killed more than 33,700 Palestinians, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. The ministry does not differentiate between civilians and combatants in its count, but, say, but says women and children make up two-thirds of the dead. O'Hare warned travelers on the social platform X to take alternative forms of transportation with car travel. Quote, substantially delayed this morning due to protest activity, unquote. Some travelers stuck in standstill traffic uh, left their cars and walked the final leg to the airport along the freeway, tra uh, trailing their luggage behind them. Among them was Madeline Hanan from suburban Chicago. She was headed for O'Hare for a work trip to Florida when her husband and her husband's car ended up stalled for 20 minutes. She got out and, quote, both ran and sped walked, unquote, more than a mile. Uh, she said she made it to the gate on time, but barely. Quote, this was an inconvenience, unquote, she said in a telephone interview from Florida. Quote, but in the grand scheme of things going on overseas, it's a minor inconvenience, unquote. While individual travelers may have been affected, operations at the airport appeared near normal with delays of just under 15 minutes, according to the Chicago Department of Aviation. Uh, inbound traffic toward O'Hare resumed around 9 in the morning. Uh, near Seattle, the Washington State Department of Transportation said a demonstration closed the road, the main road to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Social media posts showed people holding a banner and waving Palestinian flags while standing on the highway, which reopened about three hours later. Uh, and it goes on to talk about how the, the protests have affected other airlines and uh, airports and stuff like that. Um, the thing of it is, is that, you know, yeah, in, in this country, people have a right to, to do this, to organize and things like that. Um, but what puzzles me is that the war that's going on over there with between Israel and Hamas, uh, like I said, it's it's to take a side one way or the other. You're still on the side of of mass killing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're still saying that one side should live, the other side should not. And yet we hear reports about how innocent people are being killed in this, women and children you know, places being hit that really are not military targets, but they're just being hit, damaged, you know. It's in, in, they're in the, the crossfire, you know. Um, and like I say, b big bombs, they don't discriminate against people. I mean, they, they explode and wherever the debris goes, you know, that's where it goes. I mean, it's, just, it's not going to just hit certain people. Um, and my my issue is that you know nobody wants those things to happen nobody wants innocent people to die nobody wants children to die okay only really extremist terrorist thinking people would say it's okay that these people that kids and women and everybody else should die in these wars i mean who would i mean anybody that thinks like that i mean they're dangerous okay <laughs> they really are dangerous people and right now, you got leaders over there in that part of the world who think that way, and their militaries are following right along behind that, okay? And that's why they're trying to do these heinous genocidal things, you know, uh, in this war that the UN, the United States, people in the United States are so pissed off about. So it makes no sense to me that I'm going to be pro-Israel and and demand the, that the other side stop shooting. And then the other side says, well, I'm going to be pro-Palestinian, demand that the other side stop shooting. Well, you both want the, the fighting to end. So why not just stand on the side of peace? You know, get off the sides and get in the middle. Get in the middle of this fucking thing. 
and stop the fighting that way. You, you, ta- you stand on the side of peace and that's where your, your solution begins. Okay, taking one side or the other is not the answer here. You're still siding for the same violence to continue. Okay, so you're not stopping anything. Um, and unless you're on the side of peace, this would bring everybody together. Everybody that has that common denominator is what needs to come together here. Okay, you can't come into this into this country. I mean, you can't you, you can't be a, a citizen in this country. Go out and protest and say, "Oh, death to America!" And death to you know, you're 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 hollering at the country that gives you the right to be able to go out there and say that for one thing. Okay, so that makes you look stupid. Uh, that you think America is. I mean, if you went and did said things like that in Iran, you know, death to Iran or something, they'd come out and kill you. <laughs> the government wouldn't stand for it. Over here, we let that go on. Okay. Over here, we, we allow that. We, we protect your right to be able to go out and protest and say these things, okay? But don't get don't scream death to the United States, you know, okay? You ought to look at yourself. You're the one that's creating the, the confusion here because if you really cared at all about the, end, the putting a stop to this, then you'd stand on the side of peace, all of yous, you know? That's where you got to be. That's the position you got to take. But you, you see, the problem is you guys don't want to mingle on this, do you? You don't want to be, you don't want to have a common footing with the other side because they're your, your sworn enemies, right? Even though you both want the same thing, you're not going to admit it, okay? Because at the end of the day, you all want one side or the other to win, okay? And so you come out and you talk about, oh, stop the killing, you know, why? So you guys can go in and finish the job? You know what I'm saying? It's just the same fucking thing, okay? But if you cared enough to stop it, then both sides would agree to the same thing, and it makes it that much easier for there to be, you know, a ceasefire, to be conference, to be talk, you know, to discuss this thing in a diplomatic fashion, which is where this this issue belongs. But you see, the longer this kind of fighting goes on, the harder it's going to be to stop it, okay? And that's the problem that's been faced in that part of the world for generations. The fighting over there in Israel has gone on so long, I doubt many people actually could put their finger on what the hell started it all. You know, I bet a lot of people over there don't even know. It's just that their their hatred is what fuels it. The hatred to look at the other side, you know, and seeing them over there, or you know what I'm saying? To, to look over the, the border, as it were, infuriates them, okay? Although, you know, in a lot of cases, there's probably a lot of reason for that anger to be there. But you see, an eye for an eye only continues the, the cycle, doesn't it? It doesn't stop anything, thing, because for every person you kill, there's a family member that's going to come after you, you know? Those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword, you know, as it was said basically in the Bible. Okay, that, that is as true a quote then as it is today. You know, although today would say if you, those who pick up a gun are going to be brought down by one. You know, same thing. So why, why take a stand one way or the other on this thing over there when, when it's obvious what you want is this fighting to stop? You don't want to see any more bloodshed. You don't want to see any more of your culture destroyed. Okay, you want it to stop. And it never should have started in the first place. It doesn't matter now who started it. The fact is both sides have been deeply engaged in this thing long enough now that it can stop. It needs to stop. Because, you know, it's like one of them kind of, uh, you know, what do they call it, those forever wars? I mean, that's what this is. You're fighting a forever war, and and all you're doing is you're just escalating it. You know, you're not de-escalating it. So... And that's a, that's a lack of goals, I think, uh, and an, on another part, is what are, what are you trying to settle here? You know, you, you, you waste 400 lives to avenge 12, you know, or you waste 30,000 lives to avenge 1,000. I mean, is that really what it's worth? That's the trade-off? I mean, who's going to avenge all the other ones that died? To, to avenge the ones that did die. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? How how the thought process can be very... It's, it's much easier just to say, let's have a stop to this whole thing. Bring peace, bring a ceasefire, do whatever it takes to just put the guns down. Put away the fucking weapons. Everybody here in America, if you're going to be protesting this, stand on peace. 
stand on the side of peace, demand that, you know, Washington, D.C. does take steps to bring these people to the table and put a ceasefire. Get the U.N. involved in that. You know, stop this fucking shit. You know, and really, that's that's really, you know, I think the best position to take. I can't think of any other way of looking at this uh, where you're not just getting bogged down by information that really only confuses the whole matter and makes it, you know, puts the, the, the cloud out there to keep you from seeing the obvious, you know. So anyway, that's it for today. So I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. Uh, take care of yourself and your health and treat each other nice. And uh, subscribe and comment. And I will talk to you guys another time. So take care. Bye-bye.